Hello music enthusiasts, I'm Andy Vandette. Today I'm here at Tulua.com with Chris Muth. I've known Chris forever as he was technical director at Masterdisc, Sterling, Hit Factory. He's probably the smartest guy I know, so now that I need to replace the cartridge on my Techniques turntable, I've come here to work with him. I put Andy's turntable on the table, the dining room table, uh, in order for us to take a look. Uh, it's a Technics direct drive, D202, which is a fine, a fine table from the mid to late 70s, I guess, isn't it? Mm -hmm. right? Sure is. And uh, we have an Audio Technica cartridge on there that has been on there for quite some time. Uh, and so Andy uh, wanted, he got an order phone. An order phone red, which is a fine cartridge. It's not a good middle of the road cartridge. Not really cheap, not really expensive, and a good performer for um, what it's going to do. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this Audio Technica cartridge. Um, so what I do is I hold the cartridge carrier, the head shell, and rotate the sleeve out to let that up. And um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to undo the screws, the mounting screw, ditch the hardware, pull this cartridge off, and um, take a look and see what we're dealing with with this new one. One screw gone, the other one's close, and out goes the cartridge. Uh, yeah, the stylus is bent. It's had a couple of collisions, so that is going to go away. Um, so what, with that, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this ortophone. And oh, it's a nice looking dandy piece. It comes with a screwdriver and some screws and hardware. Okay, so I've got this, this new ortophone 2M red. It's going to come out of its little case. Now what they uh, said in the manual is to remove the stylus. Uh, to do that, I'm going to grab the back of the body and the stylus and pull straight back. Um, I'm going to leave the guard in place and just set this over in a safe area for the moment um, so we can deal directly with the cartridge. Uh, now you'll notice on the back there are four colors. Uh, red and white is the right channel and I'm just going to hook those up to the wires that are hanging off this um, head shell. Um, it's actually it's a really easy job. There's really nothing to it. Um, you want to be kind of careful with these wires to not bend them too hard, flex them because they can snap. Now we've got um, the green and blue is the left side, green is ground, the world around. And I got a little bit of a glare, so I'm having a little trouble seeing this, but that's okay. Here we go. So we've got the left and the right channels hooked up and seated very well. Uh, the next thing I want to do, um, Orphone has provided two sets of hardware here. So what I want to do is put the screw through, and I want about three or four threads showing. That one's too long. So let's pick the short ones. Um, what I'm going to do is hold this guy in place, line up the little holes just so I can use the, um, the head shell as a guide. You want to be careful not to cross thread these things. Make sure the screws are going straight in. Now the Ortophone, unlike the um, previous shell, the Audio Technica, and I know that Shures also use a nut, the Ortophone, however, um, has a tapped hole, uh, and that looks like a two and a half millimeter metric screw goes into the tap hole, well that makes it really, really easy um, because you don't have a nut that's going to be twisting around in the air down there. So what I want to do is um, get the screws just barely snug. They're going to hold tight enough so I can, uh, tight enough so I can, um, it'll keep the cartridge from slipping and loose enough so that we can adjust it a little bit. So there we go. I'm going to put them in the middle of the travel and put the cartridge back on the tone arm. So once again, we're going to tighten up this ferrule. I want to. I don't want to apply twisting forces to the arm very much because you don't want to hurt the bearings and stuff in the back. So my reaction has an equal and opposite reaction. Grab the cartridge, torque in the ferrule just a little bit. So to check this thing out, uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to balance the tone arm. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't put the needle on. Let's put the needle on first because it's not going to make an awful lot of sense. Um, oh, let's do this. Let me get this cartridge out of here. Oops. Something for the editor to do. All right, so we're going to mount the mount the head shell back on the tone arm. 
And remember to not apply lots of force on, on the tone arms so that, because that can hurt the bearings. Anyway, I'm going to grab the head shell and grab the ferrule and give it a little turn. Uh, the next thing to do is to balance out the, the back weight. Um, and for that, I'm going to pull the stylus guard off and adjust the, the counterweight here until the, the, until the tone arm is just a little bit positive. In other words, I just want it to be slightly over balance. I don't want it to go up, I want it to go down. There we go. So once you get it so it just barely goes down, you hold the weight from moving and zero the uh, the ring, the, the ring that tells you what the weight is. I'm going to grab them both and turn it to 1.8 grams because that's what's specified um, on this cartridge. I'm going to shut the anti-skating off because we are going to put the cartridge's protection shell or yeah, protection cover back on and that in place and put the anti uh, the um, the protractor. This little device uh, came from Acoustic Sounds and it's a geodisc protractor and it's the easiest way that I know of getting the cartridge in the right place. Um, basically, what the task is at hand uh, is that the needle has to be in the right place in three dimensional space, back and forth, and the cartridge also has to be rotated so that it is square with the turntable. Um, for those of you that don't have a geodisc or don't have the ability to get one, any protractor will work. There's lots of cartridges come with them. And basically what a protractor does is it, it lays on the center spindle and it goes out and has what basically looks the same as this. A little plot with a square hatch and a target for the needle to drop on. Uh, the thing that makes the geodisc really easy to use is it's got this nice long sight. Um, so you basically what you do is you look down the sight and you set it so that it's going down the center pin of the tone arms pivot. And with that in place, uh, what I want to do is set the cartridge uh, so that the overhang on the stylus, the, the stylus should land right on that white dot. And I need to come out just a little bit. That's why we left the screws halfway tight. Um, so that we can adjust it in and out. And now the stylus is directly over the white dot. Um, <clears throat> with that, I want to sight down the side of the cartridge and get the sideways the zenith set so that we are square with the little hash mark lines that are on the protractor. So that looks good. I'm going to pick this guy off. Hold the cartridge firmly and tighten down the screws. Now the screws need to be fairly snug. Um, you don't want them loose. If you tighten them too much, of course, it will strip. So give them about, give them a good snugging, but don't overdo it. I'm going to hand the protractor back to Andy. Just going to get rid of it. Uh, the next tool that we're using is a test disc. This is also available from AcousticSounds.com, and uh, this happens to be the test disc that we made at Sterling Sound. Um, and that was a that was a big job. That was several years ago, um, I was rebuilding this lathe that's in the picture, and um, Al Grundy rebuilt the cutter head. And we had a, a big team of people that was with us. So we had um, um, Ryan Smith was doing the editing. Barry Wolfson is the uh, now the technical director. He took over my job when I left Sterling. And uh, Barry's a very good fellow. He's a nice guy, very knowledgeable. So um, uh, and George Marino helped us a lot on this. Also, we. Um, we sat down, George figured out what the levels of the tone should be cut at, and uh, my job was to adjust the lathe to make the, the actual adjustments so that the system was aligned. And uh, when we were done, we checked it out with a lot of DIN uh, German test records and stuff like that. And it looks really good and it runs great. Um, so we're ready to go. Um, basically, <clears throat> what the test record is going to allow us to do is that the last adjustment. So with the, with the protractor, we got the stylus overhang set. And we've got the cartridge's zenith set so that it's square with the reticles on the protractor. Um, what the test record's going to allow us to do is actually get the azimuth straight. Now the azimuth is how the cartridge, how perpendicular it is to the record. And um, the reason why that's important is because the stereo separation is the best when the cartridge is, or when the needle is exactly 90 degrees or sticking straight up off the record. And the way how you measure that is really simple. Um, you run it into your preamp and 
you know, the first tone on this record, of course, is left and right. It's, uh, it's just the one kilohertz tone straight up. So you adjust that and measure with a voltmeter on the preamp output and adjust the left and right channels until they're the same level. Um, and once that is done, then you're going to play the left channel. You look at this bleed to the right channel, which should be 25 or so dB down, and then play the right channel only and look at its bleed to the left channel. And it should, the, the bleed from the crosstalk from left to right and right to left should be the same. And you, you, what you do is you grab the head shell and adjust the tilt on it until that's correct. So um, can, with that, I'll plug the turntable in and we'll take a look over at the console and see what we have going. And we're ready to play our test tones here. So I'm going to start off with um, the 1K at 0 VU. Now remember, when you don't, I know that most of you don't have consoles and stuff like that, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, you measure that, but you need a voltmeter to do that. Um, so over here, uh, we are going to adjust this thing. It just so happens that it's uh, right on the money. Um, so that's fine. To check our crosstalk, once again, we're going to play our left channel into the right and look and see what it is on the meter. And then we're going to play the right channel into the left. Now we have plus 4 on the left and minus 24 on the right which is 28 dB of separation. And um, looking at the scope, that looks pretty good too. So 28 dB left to right. Let's see what our right to left is. Um, that is 24 dB. So the cartridge is a little bit tilted, and you can see from the scope face that it is also. So let's do an experiment here. Let me show you what it looks like when it's wrong. No, actually, that's not going to let me adjust it very much. Just enough. I think that's going to straighten it out. All right, so we got 4 to 21 is 25 dB left and the right. And, yeah, minus 22, 24, so, yeah, that's doing pretty good. We've got the tilt on our cartridge set properly. And with that, that's basically all there is to it, to get your cartridge in the right place. You get it physically in the right place with a protractor. Physically align the azimuth by playing tones and measuring the crosstalk through the system. And then um, mechanically setting the weights so that uh, it's got the proper tracking force. And that's all there is to it. That cartridge is ready to play records.